Hello students, this is the second video of chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plant and today we will talk about the second part of the video which is the female part of the flower. So on the page number 24, before this from page 23 it is already discussed in the previous video. So let us see what are the important questions from this paragraph. So in this paragraph the most important question is that the female reproductive part which is gynoecium it can be monocarpillary or it can be multicarpillary. Now, if gynoecium has only one pistil or only one carpel, it is known as monocarpillary pistil. And if gynoecium, it has more than one pistil or more than one carpel, it is known as multicarpillary pistil. We know that multicarpillary pistil are further of two types. Now, multicarpillary means if the gynoecium has more than one pistil. Now, if more than one pistil, which the multicarpillary ovary has, they are fused, then they are known as syncarpus. And if the pistil of the multicarpillary ovary are free, it is known as apocarpus. So, if the pistils of multicarpillary ovary are fused syncarpus, if the pistil of multicarpillary ovary are free, it is known as apocarpus. And we know the pistil or the carpel, it consists of three parts, which is the stigma, which is the landing platform for the pollen grain, style, which is a long elongated structure, which connects the stigma with the ovary and the ovary, which is the basal bulge. Now, on the page number 25, the most important diagram comes. This diagram is draw the diagram of anatropous ovule. So, this is the diagram of anatropous ovule. Now, let me explain the parts of the anatropous ovule. The first part of the anatropous ovule is funicle. Funicle is the stalk of the ovule. This stalk of the ovule is funicle or better you can say that funicle is the stalk of the ovule that connects the ovule with the placenta. You know that place, uh, ovule is connected with the ovary with the help of placenta. So funicle it is the stalk of the ovule which connects the ovule with the placenta. Now Next is, there are protective coverings over the ovule. The outer protective covering is the outer integument. The inner protective covering is the inner integument. So, these protective coverings are outer integument and inner integument. Now, you can see that integument cover the whole of the ovule except at the tip. And at the tip, there is small hole or there is small opening. That is known as micropyle. And the end towards the micropyle is micropylar end. Whereas the other end is the chalazal end. Now in the center of the ovule, there are many cells uh, which are known as nucellus. These cells, nucellus cells have abundant food reserve. And in the center of the nucellus is the embryo sac which represents the female gametophyte. So this is the structure of an anatropous ovule you should know that this outer integument and inner integument after fertilization develop into seed coat. Now let us look down and see what else is important from this paragraphs. Now in these paragraphs the important question is that name the other name what is the other name of the ovule? We know megasporangia or megasporangium is the other name of the ovule. Now what is the female gametophyte? We know the embryo sac is the female gametophyte. For example, male gametophyte is the pollen grain, female gametophyte is the embryo sac. Now, you should know that at the micropylar end, at the my not on the chalazal, at the micropylar end, at the micropylar end of the ovule, this is the micropylar end, this is the micropylar end of the ovule. At the micropylar end of the ovule, there is one megaspore mother cell. There is one megaspore mother cell. Look here. There is one megaspore mother cell. In this megaspore mother cell, there is meiosis. There is meiosis in this megaspore mother cell. And during meiosis, in the megaspore mother cell, four megaspores are formed. And this process of formation of Four megaspores by meiosis in the megaspore mother cell is known as megasporogenesis. This is known as megasporogenesis. But 
unlike microsporogenesis in megasporogenesis out of the four megaspore produced three degenerate three die and only one is left which develop into the embryo sac so here meg what is megasporogenesis is also very important now moving on to the page 26 here very important question is asked from this para what is monosporic development of female gametophyte we know that female gametophyte that is embryo sac develops from only one megaspore because out of the total four megaspore form three degenerate so it develops only from one megaspore because the female gametophyte or the embryo sac develops from one megaspore it this develop this kind of development from one megaspore is known as as monosporic development now if we move at the top these diagrams especially which i am highlighting from this till this is very important and the question comes here tell the formation of embryo sac how is embryo sac formed so the formation of embryo sac it takes place we know from the megaspore one functional megaspore which is left because three degenerate so the nucleus of that one megaspore undergoes mitosis to form two nucleated structure see this is the this one which i am highlighting is a two nucleated structure so the nucleus of the functional megaspore undergo mitosis to form two nucleated structure now after undergoing mitosis first mitosis it undergoes second mitosis the nucleus undergoes second mitosis to form four nucleated structure after undergoing second mitosis it undergoes third mitosis to form eight nucleated structure now see first it undergoes first mitosis it form two nucleated structure it undergoes second mitosis to form four nucleated structure it undergoes third mitosis to form eight nucleated structure now you should remember that these mitotic divisions are free nuclear and there is no cell wall formation until the eight nucleated structure is formed after the eight nucleated structure has formed two cells remain in the center and they form the polar nuclei three cells move towards the antipodal cell and they uh, sorry, sorry three cells move towards the chalazal end and they form the antipodal cell three cell move towards the micropylar end and they form two synergids and one egg so this is how the development of embryo sac take place you will write embryo sac is formed from the functional megaspore the nucleus of the functional megaspore undergoes first mitosis to form two nucleated structure second mitosis to form four nucleated structure third mitosis to form eight nucleated structure and after that two cells remain in the center they form polar nuclei three cells move towards chalazal and they form antipodal cells three cells moves down towards the micropylar end to form two synergids and one egg now here one more important question which is asked is what is egg apparatus egg apparatus is nothing but two synergids plus egg forms the egg apparatus now moving on to page 27 till here is the explanation of development of female gametophyte that is embryo sac this i have already explained to you now moving on to this paragraph here very important question comes what is function of filiform apparatus see filiform apparatus means it is a cellular thickening which is present near the synergids now they guide the pollen tube uh, towards the synergid when the pollen grain land on the sigma and forms the pollen tube this pollen tubes come out from the pollen grain and to guide this pollen grain into the synergids and then into the ovule this filiform apparatus helps now second most important question from this para is that how many nucleated and how many celled structure is embryo sac you should know that embryo sac is eight nucleated and seven cell structure now why seven cell structure because two polar nuclei which is present in the middle they form one central cell so that is why it is eight nucleated and seven cell structure